Hello everyone, so this is practical one simulation of ODE models using OpenCUR. Uh, we'll be covering three sub practicals in this. The first being running a simple cell ML model, the second being running a first order ODE, and the third being running a model of the Lorenz attractor. Uh, it's important to note that all of these practicals are present in the cell ML tutorial PDF that is available on the internet. This is just for your understanding. So let's head over to OpenCOR. So as you can see, the first step that we do in OpenCOR is we start a new file, new cell ML file, right? And then as you can see, your model is entered here. The first model is our simple ML, simple cell ML model. So then we'll be, this is generally the Van der Poel model. So we'll be using that. So I'll just enter the code here and you should be able to see the code at the end of this recording as a whole if you want to copy it from there or as I mentioned earlier you can just take it from the PDF that is available on the internet so here is the entire equation uh, all the equations typed out as you can see what we've done here is define all the variables that we'll be using x y t and mu uh, and then we've also created the first order or first order derivative equations so first you describe what the relation of x is to y so um, dx by dt is equal to y and then we've used that in another derivative equation where we've described y is y's relation to t so dy by dt is equal to mu into 1 minus x square uh, into y minus x so as you can see these equations pop up once you click on the line that describes them if you click here there will be no equation popping up but if you click on the on the lines that have the equations you will be able to see the equations and check their work it's also important to note that what we're doing here is essentially defining the model defining the model that's the model name as uh, then you start defining the composition of the model itself you say that there are these four variables uh, you give them initialization values then you put them in your uh, derivative uh, differential equations and then you close the brackets like any other programming language I always find it easier to give tabs and make indentations so it's easier to see where it ends exactly so now that we have the equation ready and I've cross-checked the equation of what I know it to be correct we head on to the simulation part so first of all what I need to before I even go to the simulation part is I need to save this file otherwise we cannot progress from here so I'll go here I will name it as a vendor pole which I already have and then I will save it right and then it's been saved as a dot cellml file and these two tabs that were grayed out have now been ungrayed out so then we head over to the simulation tab in the simulation tab as you can see you have a space for graphs you have this you have a space for graphs you have a space for all the values the initialization values that we were seeing earlier and a space to manipulate the axes of the graphs themselves so ending point thousand point interval one so it will give you your readings after every point interval of one and your starting point is zero you add graphs by the green uh, green buttons here subtract them from the red buttons here now what we need to do is create two separate graphs at least uh, two separate graphs at least because as we've seen earlier our two equations that we know for sure are of dx uh, dx by dt to y and then dy by dt in relation to the rest of the equation so our first equation I click on the graph I want this graph to represent um, dx by dt or x with respect to t so I click on x I right click on it plot against variable of integration will plot it against t alternatively I can go to plot against main and then select t from here but if I select plot against variable of integration that also works so now the line that will be plotted will be x uh, with respect to t then I click on the second graph then now I want to obviously uh, plot out y against t so I plot against variable of integration which is again t here so now this graph will be responsible for plotting y against t my last graph will be to plot y against x 
so I again click on Y but this time I go to plot against main and then X now this will again plot Y however this time it will be in relation to X instead of T so now that I have all of my graphs or how they will be plotted out ready what I will do is manipulate the values of the graph axis themselves so I get a better clearer diagram so let's perhaps reduce the scale of the graph and set it to only a hundred as the ending point so somewhere over here but I'll decrease the point interval as well to see how it changes on a smaller scale um, my starting value is the same my ending value is the same all I need to do, need to do now is run the model which as you can see once I run the graph you get three different equations uh, or at least three different waveforms that look like this uh, you, know, you can interpret these waveforms based off the internet uh, but yeah that's the first sub part of the OpenCR practical we've successfully typed out a model uh, manipulated the graph readings to make them more understandable and then run it and then we've got three separate graphs each representing a different variable plotted against a different variable now all you have to do is take snippets of this using the snipping tool and then copy it and paste it in your uh, in the document that you made earlier so with that done we now move on to the second part of this main practical that is running a first order ODE this is not a very complicated equation uh, it just go, shows exponential decay or exponential increase and then we look at the equation in just a bit so now that we have our next equation ready we follow the same step we go to new cell ml you type out your code here which again you can take from the document available online or simply just copy it from the screen or once I'm done typing it out you can just pause the video there that's the equation typed out um, you can see that the basic un the basic principle of the equation is the same you define the model that's the model name which you have given it uh, then you define the composition which is you've created again four variables here then you put them into a first order derivative equation uh, sorry first order differential equation which you can then run on a graph as we did earlier as well and again before you actually run this you have to again save it so it's a control s i'm saving it as want the file name again i'm saving it as first order model um, again saved as a cell ml file which means these options become ungrade go back to simulation right uh, now in the simulation we want to obviously what look at the equation right we obviously need to graph or plot the graph of y versus t so i maybe i need only one graph here i will know in some time but let's stick with one graph for now so i click on the graph to make sure it's blue highlighted blue so you can understand the difference in two graphs but yeah clicking on the graph to make sure that that's the graph i select discarding the unused one clicking on y right click plot against variable of integration now what this should give me is a graph that shows either an exponential increase or an exponential decay uh, the value of this exponential increase or decay uh, depends on the value of the value of the parameters that we give so if you see that if we vary these values the equation that we get also varies so now that we set the graph we can just uh, just change the ending point to 10 which was a thousand earlier change the point rate interval to 0 0.1 to again increase the resolution of the graph and now all we have to do is run it so once you run the graph you should see a plot like this so this shows that there is an exponential decay of whatever quantity you had at the beginning in this case uh, looking at the graph it started off at 5 and then there was an exponential decay until it reached the near zero stage uh, and then it continued in minute uh, decre decremental quantities until it finally reached zero at the end or slightly above zero uh, slightly above two my apologies so 
now that we have a graph that shows exponential decay you can just reverse the values of b and y to get a graph that will show you exponential increase so i click on the clear simulation results to clear the graph from the graph from the graph table and then i press run again and this time i see an exponential increase in which case it increases from the starting point which was earlier 2 and then increases up to the value of b which is 5 over here and these are your two graphs one showing an exponential de a decrease and one showing an exponential increase thus demonstrating that you can now plot a simple first order ode in OpenCOR. So now again, similar to our earlier experiment, we take screenshots of this and post them in our document. So as you can see, we've now copy pasted everything into the document under the second sub practical heading that is running a first order ODE. Now we move on to the last part of the first practical that is running a model of the Lorentz retractor. If anyone remembers the Lorentz retractor, it is a loop. Uh, it's the graph that looks like a, a loop running over itself again and again and again. The equation for this again you can take from the PDF or you can pause the video at any time once I've completed it to copy and paste it onto your screen. What you have to do similar to every single OpenCOR practical that we've done till now is head on over to file, new, file, new, cellml file and enter your model here the Lorentz equation is not a code that's going to be copy pasted from the pdf since it's an image there so you'll have to type it out uh, but yeah the principle is basically the same you type out the code and then you save it as a cell ml document uh, you can co copy the code from my screen after i am done so that's the Lorentz equation that you can now pause and copy from my screen and as always you save it and then copy it onto your screen but now that I've saved it all my indexes are correct and now I head on over to the simulation tab here again as you can see we have created three different ODE equations which means that we will also be uh, three different equations not necessarily ODE but three different equations for short which means we now need to plot each and every one separately. So here we need to make three graphs which you can make by pressing the green button, green plus button thrice. Then the first graph that I need to make is x with respect to t. So I go to x plot against variable of integration which will give me x with respect to t. Then I go to the second graph. This graph I will be plotting y against x. So I go to plot against main, click on x. I go to the third graph, click on z not z dash just z right click on it plot against main x which will which means that the third graph that i get will be z against x i've changed the point ending point of 50 and i've changed the uh, point interval to 0 0.001 please note that you can improve uh, increase it beyond this and you can also uh, play with the scale using this 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 bar once this uh, once the simulation is started but do note that this will be a very CPU heavy um, program and there's a good chance that OpenCOR crashes if you increase the point interval or the scale. So now all that's left is to run this and see how the graphs come out. So let's run it. So after running, as you can see, you get, first of all, you get X with respect to T and then you also get the two loops, two, two, uh, the two graphs that show the loop. Um, going over themselves again and again and again in a nearly infinite uh, pattern. So this is again the graphs that are expected from uh, the Lorentz equation. The interpretation of this equation can again be taken from the PDF or online. This is how to get to those graphs. Now after this you again go to the snipping tool, take images and then paste them in your document. And that is the end of practical one using OpenCOR to make simple ODE equations. Thank you for watching. Um, if you have any doubts, let someone decide now.